What's up, people? Today, we're going to continue with holding police officers liable. Now, what we're going to get into is the 14th Amendment and the Due Process Clause. Now, again, we've been speaking about fiduciary duty. We've been speaking about their oath of office. We've been speaking about fraud and breaches of fiduciary duty. Now, we're going to talk about how they're held liable in a couple of cases that I'm going to throw in there. The first one is Griffin v. School Board 377 U.S. 218 um, 1974 were subject to the commands of the 14th Amendment, but the county was not able to invoke the protection of the 11th Amendment. It's no more than the recognition of long-established rule that while county action is generally state action for the purpose of the 14th Amendment, a county defendant is not necessarily a state defendant for the purpose of the 11th Amendment. Now, this is one of those where you kind of have a little, little conundrum. Because in certain areas, just like in Texas, you have constables, regular police officers, and then you have sheriffs. All of these work at different levels for the government, for the most part. And one of the things they hate is the fact that the Freedom of Information Act gave birth to the Open Government Act of 2007, which allows us to watch them doing their job. And a lot of them don't like that. And when they're violating your, when they're violating the Constitution, period, which they've sworn an oath to do you and protect, uphold and protect, because the Constitution itself is a bill of their restrictions, what they cannot do. So we have to understand, just like in Griffin v. School Board, there's a lot of things that they try to do, which is enforcement of policy. And policy never becomes law, no matter how well used or how well accepted. Policy never gains legal authority by usage and that's Hall v the state of Arkansas and again that's an Arkansas Supreme Court case but it builds from Griffin v school board and also Mono v New York City Department of Social Services 1978 a county like a city is liable for acts committed pursuant to official policy where a high-ranking county official such as a county prosecutor, authorizes and directs activities which deprive a person of constitutional rights, the county itself is liable under USC Code 1983, which that is one of the most widely held or used codes in federal court in holding police officers and even district attorneys and judges liable for their actions. So again, in order to get to certain points, you have to understand, one, you need proof that they had a duty to you. That proof is their oath of office. They're going to give you things such as a citation, which has been taught by Brown v. U.S., a citation is a violation of the Separation of Powers Act. Why? Because you have an executive officer performing judicial duties. And you cannot cross-connect both of those. Now, they also have precautions that are set up because they can't just make up things. They can't even, even if you consent to it, they're not allowed to search you. Let's say you are detained and they're doing a safety search. I've shown, even unless they can point out that dangerous object or point out where the danger may be, they cannot just go in your pockets and look for contraband without a warrant or consent. So understanding that when they go into your pockets because they've detained you for safety, it is an immediate violation. It is part of the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. You can do things such as a map hearing, which I'm going to go over shortly. I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos. So also, by all means, 
go back and watch them because yes I'm kind of cranking it up a little bit but I want people to understand this is where the as as my daddy used to say this is where the rubber meet the road because now once I finish this series we're going to go into actually filing motions in several different courts for several different proceedings and it's going to go over the next three or four maybe even five months which is going to be as daily post there will also be some lives and when we get on live I need interaction I want you guys to come in and say something ask questions because that's the time to ask because I'm there I can get your questions answered if I don't answer them I'll probably put up a video and a lot of the questions that I have asked I've referred people back to videos I've already posted so just understand this is reinforcing the exact same thing I've been saying to you these are part of the videos I've been putting up so just understand holding them liable and why they have that duty and why you're able to do it and where you are able to do it so understand they're obligated to you you are not obligated to them and when they violate you it doesn't matter who they are each one of them are deemed to know the law so therefore they're gonna hold you accountable regardless of your situation so you should be able to do the exact same thing and that is the only way change will come so until next time